soul and forget not all of his victories. Yeah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord God our Father, we thank you for another opportunity just to enter into your gates. Father God, we give you honor, we give you praise and glory, because you deserve our praise. Yeah. You are the only true and living God. Yeah. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us. You've been good to us, and we thank you for what you have done and what you're going to do. You are our Father. We can't depend on you. You are our children. It is you that have made us and not we ourselves. We look to you. We depend on you and we trust you. We come in the name of Jesus, your only begotten Son this morning, Lord Jesus, asking you to forgive us for all our sins, all our transgressions, all our iniquities, all our shortcomings. You are a forgiving God, and we thank you for forgiving us and trying us one more time. Father, we come today asking for your strength. We need thee. We can't make it without you. You have already said that in this world we shall have tribulation. But you told us to be a good cheer, to be a joy, for we you have already, you have already overcome this world. The victory is in your hand. Father, we need thee every well, we need you on every living side. Yeah. Families need you. Children need you. Yeah. Uh, these congressmen and the president of the United States, we all world leaders all over this world, we need you yeah. to help us, to lead us, and guide us in the way you will have us to go. Lord God, we thank you for blessing this city of joy. Yeah. You've been mighty good to this branch of Zion. Yeah. Father, even as we go forth, Right now, we ask that you bless our lead yes. in the name of Jesus. Give him whatever he needs for thy know. You know, Lord God, strengthen him, guide him, give him insight, give him wisdom. Yes. Touch him with a special anointing yes. that he may be able to guide us and take us where you would have us to go. Bless his family. His wife and his loving daughter. Bless every family in the city of Jordan. Bless every family in the city of Jordan nation. Father, we need you. We can't make it without you. You know what we stand in the need of even before we ask. Father, we ask that you go into the hospitals, the nursing home, the rehab home, wherever people are suffering, wherever they are afflicted. Help them. Have mercy on them, Lord God. For many are the affliction of the righteous, but you have already declared that you will deliver them from them all. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. You are worthy.
here with us. I want to stand on the behalf of the church that say, God bless you. We love you here and we are praying for you in the name of Jesus. John chapter 4. We're still in our series of empowerment. And I pray if you're with us for the first time, go back and listen to the services. It's important for you to get the messages um, in order for you to appreciate God's assignment um, for the body of Christ uh, this year. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 4. And I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, little children, believers, dear ones, you are of God. Somebody say, I'm of God. And you belong to God. And have already overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Because he who is in you, somebody say, he's in, he's in me, is greater than he who is in the world. Lord. I'm preaching this morning, seven feet as we get ready to pray from the subject. It's the God in you that gets you through. It's the God in you that gets you through. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us with your word, with your revelatory expression. Minister a word in that will affect and change our lives for your glory. We thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the privilege of being on this stage to pour your word to your people so we may grow, we may develop, we may be encouraged and more enriched. Now in the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, draw my strength, and you shall forever and ever and always ever be our redeemer. In Jesus' name, somebody shall amen. amen. Be seated in the presence of God. Look at somebody and just say, neighbor, neighbor. it's the God in you God. that gets you through. Yes. Man, come on, give him a hand in the praise. People of God, can I share with you that God in this season is trying to minister a word to share with us that you and I, last week we dealt with this, have been given empowerment to succeed. He has given you the legal right to get through anything that you're facing. From God's perspective, he has already given you permission to make it through whatever it is that you're looking at. It seems like he seals this by giving you and I a deposit of himself. So you don't just walk around with your heart and your liver and your lungs. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen, you walk around with God on the inside? Amen. Matter of fact, that God in you lives off of the word. That God in you don't live off of Kentucky Fried Chicken. The God in you, Jack, don't, don't, don't live off of pizza from Papa John's. The God in you lives off the word. Tell your neighbor, my God lives off the word. And so our lives must be transformed by the word. When we talk about Romans 12, 2, transformed by the renewing, there's no renewing without the word. No renewing without the word. Matter of fact, whenever you go to church, don't go to a church where you cannot connect with the visionary through the word. Because your leading comes through your feet. So if you don't come to church to get to the word, you'll never be led right. Because your, your being led is not fleshly. It's through the spiritual word that comes from God. So if you're not getting fed, you're not getting led. Grandma used to say, uh, food is in the kitchen. And no reason for you to be hungry, just go to the kitchen. Yeah. 
And every time it's time for God to grow in your life and expand his capacity, he will only be expanded by you getting the word of God, not just hanging around people, not just coming to a church building. It, it, it takes the word of God to grow you in your life. I'm going to say this again. You're not going to be led of God if you're not in the word. I don't care how long you want people to pray on you and lay hands on you. If you don't want to get in the word for yourself, then you want a spoon fed relationship with God where somebody has to feed you every moment. Every, but I was brought up to say, I won't give you a fish. Let me teach you how to fish. So when you need a fish, you can get your Can I grab somebody? Let me teach you how to go to God, not go to people. Let He said, because what you got to understand 
Talking to people who don't even want to hear God. Talking to people who always tell you, can't nobody tell me nothing. So you talk to people who are fools for advisors because they don't even listen to God. So you mean, he gives me something and in the text he says, this is what he says in the text. He says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we know he's talking about the devil that's in the world. This, this devil has three assignments in your life. You ought to know him. John 10. His desire is to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants your family. He wants your life. He wants your manhood. He wants your womanhood. He wants your children. He wants the church. That's his job. But the Bible says you have something on the inside of you that's greater than the one that wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. Oh God, I'm trying to get through this, ladies and gentlemen. It means, this is what it means. It means that the de devil is not dumb. The devil already knows, Sister Robinson, said, and I got a word for you, that the devil is a defeated foe. He knows that he's already lost. He's no longer trying to take God's space. He's no longer trying to push God out. He's lost. He already knows that when the end of time and the tribulation, he knows where he's going to go. He's going to be in confinement. He already knows. So the truth is, his enemy is no longer God. His enemy are the people who's called to God and saved on earth.
Stand on your feet. God says it's because of God. It's because of God that you won't get through this. You gotta understand it. Don't, don't talk to me about people and what it looks like. Everything you see is gonna change, guaranteed. The only thing that changes now, Hebrews 13 and 8. I'm the same. The people that run with you, they're gonna change. And this is not the year to worry about who used to be with you. You say, he used to be close to me. She used to be close. She just changed. Some said they used to be with me all the time. They just changed. I got a word from heaven. People don't change. They just stop pretending. Yeah. Day as we prepare to bless God, one of our deacons is coming up to get ready to pray, and we're excited about that. And I'm, you know, God allows us to be a part of kingdom building through giving. Because one of the scriptures that I learned back when I was in Sunday school, Reverend Dalster, is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. He defined his love by what he was willing to give. And sometimes we need to be cautious about people who always say they love you, but they're never willing to give you anything. And so as believers who've been brought by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross, he gave up blood for us. He gave up sweat and tears for us. They whipped him all night long just for us. And so we get this opportunity, believers, just to sow in the kingdom. And what we've learned at COJ, we do not give to a church. We give through a church. Because the kingdom advances through the vehicle that he calls the church, which is his bride while the church still remains. And he declares, upon this rock, I build my church. Somebody shout church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. One of my deacons are ready to pray. Amen. Deacons come and put your offering in your right hand if you have it. As the deacon prepare to consecrate, we call it a seed. The reason it's not your harvest, because what's in your hand will not pay off your house. It won't pay off your car note. It won't pay off your credit cards. It won't pay off your tuition. So it's not your harvest. It must be your seed. Somebody shout seed. Let's pray as the deacon consecrate the seed in your right hand. Father, we come today to praise you and thank you for all you've done for us, where you brought us from this mighty long way. The road might not be over yet, but we'll make it one day at a time. We're banking on you and everybody around us to go everything we need, everything from you. We know that we give, and you will give it back to us in return. Um, in order to stay with the biblical study that we've been going through for the day, uh, as you got silent on the children of Israel for 400 years between the 39th book, Malachi, and the first of the 27 books in the New Testament, you went silent on your people because they didn't do some things you asked them to do. You had Malachi to close it out by saying, would a man rob God? You said, well, I'm heavy rob you. And your tithes and your offerings, you'll curse with a curse. All because you robbed me all this land. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse that they may meet in my house and prove me their will. See if I won't open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and you can have what you need from the Father. Father, we take this time to take care of the blessings of all the money that comes in, that it be used for the blessing of our temple and the uplifting of our kingdom. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout amen. What a powerful prayer.
one of our senior deacons. We have three ways to give as we prepare to declare our giving declaration. The first way you can give is through Cash App. You should see it right now on your screen. It is a safe and secure way for you to give to the kingdom. Secondly, you can give using Givelify. It is another safe and secure way that you can give to the kingdom of God. And we thank God for all the recurring givers around the world who sow seeds into the city of joy. Lastly, you can give through P.O. Box 250 Clinton, Maryland 20735. It's right there on your screen and we thank you in advance for those who are preparing to give. Let us recite our giving declaration all over the world. As an act of faith, love, gratitude, and a heart for the house, we bring our tithes and offerings from our house and release it into yours. Because I am a generous and consistent giver, the fear of lack has been broken and has no power over me. As I give today, I'm believing for, come on, COJ, health and healing jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, bills paid off, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, and finding money. Thank you, God, for watching over your word to perform it in my life, my family, and my money. You have blessed me to be a blessing, and I have more than enough to give so that your vision and purpose for this house may be fulfilled. Somebody shout amen. amen. All over the world, press that send button. Those persons giving ushers are ready to take your offering as you give it to the kingdom of God. Let's celebrate God, for we are stewards of the kingdom. Of course. I'm so glad I got my religion in time. I got it, I got it, y'all. Precious God, show will turn this thing around. Oh, God, turn it around. Oh, God, show will turn it around. Oh, Let me say it one more time. Let me say it one more time. God show will turn that thing around. Show will. I know he will. We better leave that alone, YP. 
That's Lumberton, North Carolina right there. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, my. Oh, my. I want you to look at that person beside you. You're going to testify this time. Tell them. God surely will. He's going to turn it around. Oh, oh. Sure will. That's good news for somebody. One more time, and I'm gonna leave it alone, Deacon Smith. Let me say it up. God sure will. He's gonna turn it around. Oh, yeah. He's gonna, y'all. and gracious experiences do we enter into spiritual fellowship and covenant relations with God and with one another. Amen. Having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God angels in this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. What is the great bond of our union with God and each other? Amen. For by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love. Amen. What are our great privileges and duties in this our own church? prosperity and spirituality to sustain this worship ordinance, discipline and doctrine now this is important because it says promote its prosperity that means ladies and gentlemen that though we are in summertime and it is vacation time and it is time where we're setting up trips to travel all over the world and do fun things and relaxing things as a spiritual member part of this church, we cannot forget our responsibility to our church. And so the day when we had to be at church to give the church is over. Come on now. So if I'm in Bahamas, I can not only watch the service, if I'm at the beach, I can not only be on the beach, watch the service, but I can give consistently and effectively to support the ministry that I'm a part of. Amen. Amen. Because if you leave your house and go on a month's vacation, when you come back, you can't tell the gas man Or Verizon. I've been traveling, and so since I was not at home, I don't have to pay no bills. But you got to take care of things. And so, as a member holding up our mutual level of accountability, it is a part of our responsibility to promote the church not only spiritually but also financially. Somebody say, Amen. What vows do we gladly make as stewards of that which God has entrusted to us? To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout all nations. And, and how many of you know that takes finances? Amen. And if the church is not challenging you to dig deeper and to give, then the mission must not be greater than the church. Amen. Because God always has a vision that's big, but all he desires to see 
is consistency and commitment from those that are there and not those that are not there. Giving sacrificially to the work of the ministry. Somebody say amen. amen. For the sake of our homes and our loved ones, what gracious task do we humbly assume? We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to educate religiously our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintances. Now this is important. I know I'm pausing a lot because as a pastor, sometimes I got to talk about things. If you're in this church underneath this ministry and you're part of a family and you don't challenge your family to at least pray together daily, something's wrong. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor, I'm at work and he's over here. Well, l let me tell you something, sweetheart. You have a cell phone. Say, listen, I'm called home. I know I'm working, but I'm in between shifts. Wake up little Debbie, get her come over to the phone, put me on speakerphone. Before the children go to bed, they need to know daddy and mama, get the kids together, and somebody prays over the family. And you can't be a part of this ministry and not be challenged to do stuff with the people who live underneath your roof. I don't care what's going on. I don't care the frustrations. I don't even care what arguments and I don't care what beef it is. You should be the bigger person to say, wait a minute, before we go to bed, even if your child is down in Kentucky going to school, call me. Before you go to bed, let's pray. That's a part of our commitment of being in here receiving the word of God. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. For the sake of the unsaved for whom our Savior died, to what manner of life and conversation are we solemnly and sincerely pledged? To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all talent, backbiting, back and excessive anger, anger, and to be zealous in our efforts to, to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Since one is our master, even Christ, all we are brethren, by what paternal ministries are we to strengthen each other and adorn the teachings of our Lord and Savior? We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to slow, be slow to take, to take offense, but always, always ready for reconciliation and to mindful of the rules of our Savior, to seek it without delay. Altogether, Humbly confessing our past sins, we pray for grace and strength to keep these our holy vows for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated in the presence of God. One of the ushers will come to pick up the response of reading as the deacons are coming to form a circle.
pray over this communion, the body and blood. Let's pray with Deacon Smith as he consecrates this communion. Our Father God, if again before the end, then thou divine comfort, we come now. Thank you for your love and for your kindness, all of your tender mercies. You have watched over us, you kept us alive. You caused your face to shine upon us. So we come now, God, to receive this communion. We ask your God, we consecrate this juice, consecrate this crack. In the name of Jesus, God, we said in your word, let every man examine himself. So let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. We come now to say thank you, Lord, for being able to receive it another time. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people that love God say, Amen. 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 Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody at home has been blessed. It is no longer in the physical form which you have when you purchase food from the physical store. It is for physical purposes. Can I share with you those online and those who are in the sanctuary? What you have in your hand is a spiritual meal. The Bible says once it's consecrated, it is so important that if you take this without the right appreciation and respect, it can bring damage to your soul. Because when God looks at the cracker, he does not see the cracker, he sees his son who went to the cross, and as we talked last week, came through 42 generations so that man would not be doomed to devastation and damnation, but that you and I would have a chance to be free and experience eternal life. When he looks at the cup you hold in your hand, he does not see Welch's grape juice. He sees the blood in his son's veins that came out when he was on Calvary's cross that has caused the plan of redemption to be in place. That's why we can say whom the sun sets free is free indeed. With that cracker you hold in your hand, let's prepare. This cracker represents his body that was broken for us. The brokenness that you experience in your life it is not only alignment with you and God, it is an example for the people that know you, that know that serving God comes with the cost. And sometimes being broken is a part of the cost. Being damaged is the part of the cost. Being criticized and neglected is a part of the cost. But Jesus paid the cost, and you and I, ladies and gentlemen, let us eat together the cost of Calvary. Hallelujah. Then the Bible said he took the cup reflective of the new covenant, this agreement that when Jesus came along we no longer needed to go to the stalls to get animals to be sacrificed for us. But Jesus Christ himself was the perfect lamb without a spot or wrinkle. And it's through his blood that you and I are no longer rascals, but we're the redeemed. Let us across the world drink the blood of Jesus. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you for the body of Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for forgiveness and redemption and restoration we thank you for this opportunity as we cling to our faith by being committed to what you left in place because you said as often as you do this you do it in remembrance of me until you come back thank you for our deacons our ministers our deaconess and our ushers thank you for your people in-house and online let your blessings rest on our lives that flows through communion in Jesus' name I pray, let every believer shout amen.
to celebrate the blood. 